Here we are in the hall of the chieftain, his grand home here in Nydeheimer, Njord's home, the Viking town in Gudvangen, Norway, where I am the chieftain's skald, storyteller and poet, that is, and I am stood here at the Hneffeltafel table. There is one that is more like the originals, it's a replica, where this one is a little easier to play with, but we've actually used um, Lewis chess pieces to, to um, make up the set on a table that was built by one of our German journeyman carpenters that comes here, and I thought I'd give you a little lesson. It's Now you see there's five armies there, but one lot is white and the rest are dark. It's a two-player game. It doesn't really matter where you sit because you're going in all different directions. We've got a chair there and we've got a chair over here, but you could just as easily have had a chair there because, um, you, you, as I say, you're going all different directions. And we've got the king and he's in that castle and he's trying to get to one of his other four castles to win. Hacken Madot, I think, is what a, um, a Spanish um, lady said. But I'm, I probably remembered that wrong. Um, and they all move like the tower in chess, a straight line, like that way or that way. They can go as many as they like. They can go one or they can go all the way across like that. Um, not, not diagonal. You cannot go diagonal, no, only that way, or, or that way. And they take turns to move, with the dark going first. So what I do is I take one of the dark pieces and put it behind me back, and I shuffle with both hands. Obviously, one of my hands is holding the camera at the moment, but let's imagine I'm using both hands, and then I shuffle it about behind the back, and then I choose right or left, and on this occasion, I'm choosing right. And I've picked right, I've got it. You know, I always get that right. It's uncanny, but I've got the dark, and so that I am going to be going first. So, now remember, only he, the king, can go in the castles. The, you can move through the castle, whoops, like that, through it, but you can't stop in it. Yes, yeah. and initially, the king is a bit kind of trapped in it, it, by his own men. So let, let's move first. Of, let's let's say that this piece goes there, like that, and then let's say that this piece on their turn goes, th that's a stupid move, but it helps me illustrate my point here. Because now this piece is going to move there. Aha, we've got one at either side. That means we can take that one. Aha, ha, 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 ha. And that's how you take them. Get one to either side and you can take the piece. Now, if he was to move into that gap between the two, that's all right, because he's chosen to go through, so he can stick between them and not be taken, because he's safe, because it was his choice. Okay, so let's say that he goes there. That is another stupid move, but it helps me illustrate my point, because on his go, he can then go there. One to either side. Aha, we've got you. We'll take you out, ha 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 ha, to be slightly over dramatic. Now let's put this back as it was, because we see, in a way, the king is trapped by his own pieces. It wouldn't do you any good, actually, as dark to be going taking that piece, because it's helping him get out. So, but once they've got away, one move, two move, three move like that, and he's out, he can win in no time. So it's a race to block him before he gets that far. So let's have him move to there, his one move, then the dark move, then he's going to go there, like that, on his second move, then the dark move, da -boof. three moves, he's in his castle, he's won, hack and mad it, or whatever it is, and, or, one move, two moves, 
three moves, four. It can be round the board in just a few moves. If that piece has been taken away and he gets there, well, you know, the same equivalent on any side, he has won because you just can't stop him. Remember, there's only he can go in the castle. So if you were to block him that way, he can go that way. He's won. Nobody can stop him. Well, he's in that castle on his next move, whatever you do. So, these guys need to get him blocked before any of that can happen. Let's just tidy up a little bit down there. So, for them to win, one, two, three, four. If you can surround him like that, you've got him, right? Or up against the wall. One, two, three. Surround him and include the wall as one of the surrounding forces and you've got him again. Ha ha. There is a very rare one that hardly ever comes up called up against the wall, which is when he's there. If you can get, this is right in the centre, if you can get three pieces round him, that You'd think, well, he can go through the gate into his castle, but no, it counts as if you've got him squashed up against the wall next to the gate. But that's a very hard one to, to be able to do. But let's tidy up again a bit over here. We'll put them all back there, and then we're going to describe blocking. Because as well as surrounding the king, if you can block all four corners like that, he can't win. Some people would say you have to carry on playing, but if, if, if you blocked all four like that, I would concede. Don't you worry, because there's no point in carrying on, really. But, but there is, that is too hard to do, because there's something quite tricky about this corner, because you've got to get one piece there first, haven't you? Well, let's say the white's there and the dark's up against the corner like that. If he moves in, the castle counts as white, and you can take him. But, paradoxically, if the white is there and the dark moves in, the castle counts as dark and you can take him. Ah ha ha, ah ha 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 ha. And, uh, but a lot easier way to block is that. If you can do that to all four corners, you've got it. Now, we've got a... A, a wonderful guy here, I think he's about 19 or 20 actually, was a, but anyway, he's a, a Polish Viking who lives and works here. And he, I taught him to play. And on his very first go at playing, he came up with a move that I don't think any Viking has ever thought of in the well over a thousand years since we've been playing this game. I think every Viking is rolling over in his grave. Because on his first move, he went there... On his second move, he went there. Those one, two, three, four pieces have got that corner blocked in just two moves. And then the same over there. There. And there. Those four have got that corner move. In four moves, he's got halfway to having it completely blocked and he just has to get that corner blocked and that corner blocked to win. Genius. Um... That really is all the rules you need to know to be able to play Hanefel Tafel. Ha! Hanefel Tafel. Uh, Georg doesn't tend to pronounce the H, but I find it a lot more fun. Hanefel Tafel. And it means the King's Table in Old Norse. In the shop here at um, Nyderheimer, uh, it's actually called the Viking Game, which is a lot easier to say and a lot easier to remember. Uh, so do pop in the shop when you're here and, and, and buy a copy to take home, won't you? There, my duty is done. I'll just tidy up, put it all back into place, ready for the next player. And now, I know all the rules, I know how to play, but I don't know how to win. A nephil taffle.